Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, uh, I'm not sure if the academic committee got to see what, what they are proposing as far as, um, as far as the curriculum itself and how that is um, going to meet um, our, our requirements as well as the uh, Michigan uh, education requirements for those kinds of, of um, classes. It's probably the wrong for this consulting to, yeah. contract. I mean, that was that was discussed Monday when last okay. Monday when the board approved all that. Some okay. of that so and I, I wasn't here, but yeah, I was absent for that meeting yeah. as well. I do see that it was yeah. approved by the board last yeah. week. Yeah. So I mean, the academy and the the content of the academy was vetted and approved. So now, really, this is implementing what the board approved to say yes, we approve this yeah. academy at Ottawa Hills. So now. Um, it's up to the district to bring to us those details. So I, I don't know from a matter of process if there's further approval that would be needed. It's just a matter of the district now putting into motion what we approved, which was an academy of media production. Yeah. About my belief is um, Mr. Lewis, who oversees our high school, as well as uh, Jonathan Harper, our curriculum director, will, will certainly be involved as this gets up and going and to ensure uh, what what was presented in the discussion that took place not only last Monday, but the prior board work session, I guess it was, was uh, this contract, this this individual, he's, he has implemented this before, and it will certainly meet all the requirements to be able to graduate our kids under the Michigan, Michigan education requirements. Right. Other, other questions? Yeah, any further discussion? Okay, may I please have a motion for approval of the purchasing agenda? Motion to approve the purchasing agenda. So moved. All right, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Very good, motion carries, thank you. All right, we'll move on to the 2223 blanket purchasing list. Yeah. Also, as is usual, this June, May or June finance committee <laughs> meeting is um, your approval of the blanket purchase orders. And just to remind the committee, blanket purchase orders, these are um, expenditures that take place on a regular basis throughout the year, typically on a monthly basis. So instead of uh, coming to the board every month with an expenditure, we have, we have the proposed budget amount based on past experience or or even in many cases, some cases we have co contracts in place already. Um, we put it on this on this blanket purchase order list, and you approve it at this particular meeting that allows us then to pay the monthly or quarterly fees, whatever the case may be. As the estimates change, and you're certainly aware, um, over the course of a year, there's we come back to you to increase blanket purchase orders when when um, things don't turn out the way we had anticipated, uh, we bring this, those back to you for your additional approval and explanation as to why we need, need an increase. So um, these are what, is, what are on these few pages here are uh, typically what we have, have had historically as an example. I'll look on the screen here, the very top one there, Dean Transportation. That's, we have a, as you know, a contract that was renewed uh, just about a year ago for five years, and that is the estimated amount in the contract. The contract has a, st a set amount, but there's also there's also some adjustments based on routes run, and unfortunately, in this case, with increased fuel costs. So um, that may be when we have to come back later to for an increase, and we're and we're billed uh, monthly or every other month from them. So um, a couple of where where there is a new um, where it says new here in the far right column, that it would, yeah. would be a new vendor, it would be new to this blanket purchase order list this year. Uh, potentially some new vendors we brought in place, Dean Boiler and Burner Service to help with our boiler repair as an example. Um, so, um, Can any meet school districts as, as an example? You can see here that's that's the payment for the education and the itinerant staff, which we employ still, and then 
Um, yeah, and then we, we pay on that. So, uh, and then uh, again, a number of things here. There's a new, the Metro net there. I've got the page up here in the screen of 380,000. Uh, that is a new vendor for our network services that went out to bid, right, Craig? And, and MetroNet was the, um, won the bid based on their bid. So that it's not a new service, just a new provider of the service. That's going to be my example. question. Okay, very good. Yeah. So we had a prior vendor. Okay. The MOS communications you see there, that is all the um, classroom technology upgrades with ESSER money that was approved by <coughs> you folks on a, on a previous purchasing agenda. Again, we'll be paying that over a number of years. On a, on a, well, that's all through ESSER money? Pardon me? That's all through ESSER? That's ESSER money, yep. So on all of the new um, additional um, vendors that we have, are we bidding all of those out? I noticed you're bidding, bidding one of them out in your question, but is, is there a process or, I mean, a, a, an amount, uh, a minimum amount that uh, triggers the, the bidding process? It, or? I mean, it, any, again, there, there is no state requirement or board policy for bid, bidding services. We, as a matter of good business practices, will bid out major service expenditures. We don't, Dr. Flores, we don't have a, a set dollar limit, and but you know, generally, if we're looking at a six-figure spend, or there are a, we know there are a number of uh, providers of the service, we will, we will bid that, that out. In some cases, the services are required to be bid out by virtue of the program we're in, as an example. Um, but but we don't we don't bid every ten thousand dollar contract, if you will. So like the forty thousand dollars to control solutions uh, for temps, controls, boilers, air handlers, HAVC. That is as an example uh, um, services that you would normally not bid out. Yeah, I mean that's Alex. If I'm correct, with those are just with with the, again with a shortage of our operation people. Um, you know, our skilled, as you're probably aware, our skilled employees have diminished the last number of years because people have retired and we can't, can't fill a position. So mm -hmm. electrical, HVAC, plumbing services, we will bid out. And, and I know uh, in a couple of cases we didn't formally bid, but we got quotes from various vendors to, 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 to uh, provide those services. In some cases, we'll, we'll pick multiple vendors. My, my question, my question is, is posed because these are the kinds of entry-level opportunities that um, individuals within our community, within our diverse Grand Rapids mm -hmm. first community, uh, would welcome. I, I think they, they would uh, they would apply for things like this, and the likelihood of them being awarded um, these kinds of contracts would would help uh, enable their businesses to grow. And I guess I'd want to know your your definition of major expense. Um, I heard you say six figures, but is that relative to what your definition is? <laughs> there is there is no set limit, as I mentioned. So okay. it's again, it depends on the service. As an example, again, if you look down on what page am I on here? On page five, if you look at snow rem removal services, Twin Lakes Nursery, you may recall we bid those services out last fall, and and. We also, we didn't get enough, um, there were a couple of our sectors that were, um, where we got no bids for. And so what we did is we repackaged that and we sent out the bid saying, you can just bid for a building. And we did get some smaller vendors that were, were that did that work, so yeah. I remember we yeah. had that conversation yeah. and I expressed a similar concern. Yeah, you did. That we need to stimulate the development of, of uh, non-traditional diverse uh, companies and we do that through ensuring that, that we're doing everything possible to outreach to them. And when contracts are within their reach, I would think that we would, we would go through the extra mile to ensure that we're developing Grand Rapids first businesses and providing an opportunity for equity. 
And and as you you also may recall, we we had uh, we had a, a a vendor fair earlier this year, mm -hmm. and uh, we will have a, another one probably coming up this fall. Uh, and we got some we got some input and some interest from new vendors uh, at that particular thing too. Well, so we so we're we're making inroads, sure. if you will. Would, right? would it be accurate to to say that that our board currently does not uh, have the necessary policy in place uh, to to address this issue and and perhaps could uh, that this is an issue that ought to be taken to a policy committee and policy developed to address this issue what it, what exactly yeah what policy the, the to, is, go ahead i'm sorry <laughs> I, I guess i'm i'm not clear on exactly what the policy suggestion is is it a dollar figure for which services are bid, or is it a priority on uh, local first vendor procurement, or, or both? Mr. Oberst has indicated that we do not have a policy in place that, that requires locally or statewide a policy that requires bidding for, for uh, contracts and of this nature. For services. Services, and yeah, services. not goods, yeah. Okay, and mm -hmm. I'm suggesting that all of those things are in play, all of them, because we need a policy that that allows or, or, or incentivizes uh, Grand Rapids-based companies, including the diverse nature of companies in our, in our uh, population base, to apply for, their, for business with the Grand Rapids Public Schools. And these are opportunities for the development of businesses that have those characteristics, Grand Rapids, that they, that they operate in our city, and two, that they have some diverse characteristics. And, and we're missing an opportunity, I believe, by not having a policy that addresses that. I think it might, my personal opinion would be that the conversation would be valuable. If the state mm -hmm. or no other school district has this policy, I wanna know why, right? And, and if the reason is that it would be such an undue burden on the administration to bid out every single service that we, procure, that's a reason why districts might not be doing it. I, I, want to, I would want to know more about exactly why. I don't disagree with you that we need to um, prioritize local first. And we do have a local first policy, although it might be on we do. Construction, good specifically. Construction. construction. Okay. Yeah. 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 So um, I can certainly make a recommendation to the policy committee to look at the local first policy. And um, we could talk about it more at a work session. But I would want to know from the district, too, to understand what would that take for our business department to be able to effectively do that? Yeah, and, and that's why I think uh, that that needs to be discussed uh, because a threshold has to be uh, developed as to what is acceptable that it does not become so overburdensome. You know, when one asks why don't these things exist, they don't exist because equity in many places does not exist at the level that it needs to exist in our surrounding communities and sometimes within our own school district. Therefore, we have taken assertive actions, deliberate actions to improve our stance on equity. And it is this lens that I am, I am focusing on when we talk about the opportunities to uh, grow a business uh, for diverse communities and for Grand Rapids first communities or business community. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I don't I don't want to disagree with you in that sense. I would hope that um, Larry is outgoing. I mean, you're, you're retiring, dude, right? <laughs> yes. Last minute, um, right? <laughs> but I would hope that that the team would be able to explain to us what the what good business practices are, and and some of the struggles with that, as well as uh, I don't want to assume that we're not that we're not doing it, or we're not putting our best foot uh, forward in attracting. Businesses as well need to pursue um, districts like ours. So, so if I'm a plumber, I, I, I should drop off some information somewhere. A and um, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and certainly you know, the Chamber of Commerce should be um, uh, teaching those businesses how to, how to do that as well, to pursue that. So it, it, it should be coming from various, some uh, various places. Um, 
and and then where policy needs to happen with 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 good uh, information, then perhaps we we take we should take it up. But I think it should be good business practices. I hope that you're doing that. That mm-hmm. is that is pursuing uh, folks or business fairs or other other kinds of things that you're doing to attract those those folks. And if they don't have it, where can they get uh, the expertise to to put forth a bid and, and all of those kinds of things? Um, because it would be burdensome for us to not only go to them, but then but then say, okay, now we're going to teach you how to do this. That's not really ought not be the role. Uh, but it should be a place where they can get that kind of information or well, where I think, would yeah. they? Yeah. I mean, again, I just, just to remind the committee, we, we did have a, um, a, a vendor fair, Ms., as Ms. Williams was, was mm-hmm. instrumental in that. Very yeah. well done. Um, we had talked internally of, have, obviously having future ones, but also maybe um, specific to certain areas, as an example. MIS works a little bit differently in terms Mm-hmm. than a construction, yeah. so to have an MIS vendor-related thing. I also tell you, in connection with our um, web upgrades that we've been going on, going through now, uh, we're going to make that easier, too, for people to access bid information. Um, we looked at, I wasn't involved, and we looked at some addition, a, a current um, package, uh, procurement, I'm going to call procurement platform that actually Craig has been using with the MIS things and making that easier, easily accessible to any vendor so they can get into, they'll, they'll be able to see from our web page, and we have a purchasing page, the main web page, go there, see what's out there for bids, right? And then this particular platform, go in there, all the information you put in there, and then that constantly updates the potential vendors as to what's going on, any any questions that come up from other vendors, they all can see it. So we're, we're making some technology improvements that I think we're going to go live. When's that, do you know? A couple months? Next month? The website goes live in July. July, here we go. July. Uh, the, the procurement portal, we haven't landed on yet. Yeah, okay. So that's, it's this, you know, we've had this discussion before, as you know, and, and we are making some some inroads. Um, but again, it's it, in terms of of bidding for services. You know, that's probably better handled in a separate conversation. Um, I will just so I'm transparent here. Any any anything acquired with federal dollars directly, uh, services or goods, do require. Well, they got certain thresholds of dollar amounts. Do require um, either quotes or or actual competitive bids. So, um, you know, it's some of the, the ESSER money uh, where we are, all the ESSER money we're acquiring, we have to go through a, we have to abide by the federal procurement rules, if you will, so. Yeah, that was the rationale I asked you the question related to the contract for the media services, because I'm aware of the, that whole yeah, process. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but you know, when we have a contract of 40,000 for HAVC, or we have a contract of thirty-eight thousand for for snow removal. I mean, those are reachable sure. for small businesses sure. for any small business. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Know? Yeah, I agree. And, and and those are the kinds of opportunities we need to make sure that we have a policy and practice in place that that is fair and equitable, and that reaches out to to these individuals. I know at least three or four uh, HAVC companies right now. I'm sure it's within their reach because they're doing bigger bigger contracts than this, and they're minority. When the procurement portal does go live, do we have the ability to um, identify what, does a vendor have the ability to identify what contract value they would be, would be attainable? Do you know? That might be too far in the weeds. I don't know about contract value. I know that they can uh, request, they can self-identify under certain categories yeah. and then get automatic notifications. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. Great. Excellent. Wonderful. Okay. I suppose if there's a way, I don't know what level of customization is feasible, but to understand who might be local based on a checkbox or things yeah, like that would again, help us to again, better Again, in, in, in yeah. my discussions internally, and this, then we're talking about the portal and, and the web design, you know, we're 
it's, it's certainly a work in process. We'll get going to this thing. Most and, definitely. And, and as we have vendors that access it, we'll certainly ask for their input on what can we do better, yeah. all those kinds of Great. things, as well as the procurement page itself. And with Diane, uh, our purchasing director, um, in charge of that whole thing. So Great. Absolutely a, a step forward in the right direction. Okay. Well, looks like you need a vote for approval. So um, I will entertain a motion to approve the 2223 blanket purchasing list. Motion to approve the blanket purchasing list. May I have a second, please? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. Mm. We will move on to the donation. One do yeah, one donation in your packet from um, the STEM education grant. As you can see there, GVSU and My STEM Network and Michigan Department of Environment, of Environment Great Lake and Energy um, for just under $9,000 <coughs> for kickoff. That will start later this summer, actually. So. Any questions or discussion? All right, hearing none, may I have a motion for approval? So moved. Support? Support. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. For all that. Uh, down to item two reports. Uh, May financials are in there. They, the, if you look on that dashboard report, the front, let me just throw it up here actually. Uh, the 2022 annual budget, that is, those, those are updated budget numbers after the amendment too, which was approved, where were we in June, early this month actually. So there you can see the projected fund balance at 9.5%. Um, this will be the last dashboard report you'll get until after the audit's complete. Um, and the auditors were in for some preliminary work a couple of weeks ago and they back, they'll be back for final work. and in September in the usual timeline where the audit will be complete for your review and approval and acceptance in uh, late October. Okay. And then the, the usual detailed financial information behind that dashboard report for those that are so inclined to soak up more financial information. So, any questions? I think Mr. Smart's gonna give a brief update on our construction activities. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mishaki board members. Uh, we, uh, when it comes to the bond uh, projects, it's getting shorter. Uh, I had uh, shared with you before the Union High School project has been completed. Um, and the Ottawa High School roof uh, project um, will be completed this week. Uh, the contractor <clears throat> did add a second crew uh, for us to be able to achieve that completion date. So we're looking forward to that. And after that, we'll have then obviously the punch list items and a walkthrough to make sure that everything was done according to the contract. Innovation Central, um, that project is in high gear now. If you drive by, you'll see a lot of people uh, on the outside. Um, asbestos abatement uh, is going on right now. Uh, we have exterior masonry uh, restoration going on, uh, which is very visible from the street. Uh, and in the inside, the demolition work continues, and uh, we are uh, moving forward with the procurement of all the equipment, which has already been ordered, and we're waiting for them to arrive. Um, a, um, at some point here in the, probably by, yeah, by the next meeting, we, we expect to have an updated uh, GMP, the Guarantee Maximum uh, Price Contract from Rock for Construction. We're finalizing the final details, and uh, um, after all the, the, uh, uh, the bids were received and, uh, and the scope of work has been defined <coughs> and finalized. So uh, stay tuned, that's coming up soon. And that's what I have for bond projects at this time. Any questions for Mr. Smart? I have one question. On the, uh, the asbestos abatement staff, the, the contractors, are all of those uh, required to be certified and, and 
the other question is, uh, are they subject to any prevailing wage or is that not applicable to them? Uh, prevailing wages are not applicable for this project at this yeah. time. Uh, the uh, certification is a state certification that all asbestos abatement companies need to have. Uh, I am not very clear as to what level of certification they required of their team members. Uh, I would presume that they are following uh, the state uh, requirements for that. Um, there is specific um, a sequence uh, of permitting that goes through with the state uh, and inspections, uh, so they're following all that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. That looks like the end of the agenda. Well, just a quick note on policy. Uh, the school aid budget for next year been rumblings in Lansing that will be completed on Thursday. So stay tuned for an announcement. And if it's not, then it's going to be a while because it will <laughs> break for the 4th of July mm -hmm. summer recess. So anyways. Okay. This is the final meeting for you, yes? Yeah, yeah. If you don't mind, indulge me for mm, just a second. Please. Yes, it's it's my final finance committee meeting. And uh, it's, been a, <laughs> it's been a great ride these last eight plus years. Um, serve in the district, our, our scholars, our families, and certainly are working with colleagues and serving the board. I'm appreciative of this committee, appreciative of Ms. Schottke taking a second shot at, at uh, chairman of the committee. I, I appreciate your support and your insights and, and um, all you do for um, our scholars and family and Grand Public Schools. You guys know that she'll be in great hands with Rhonda as she steps up uh, next meeting. So um, again, it's, it's been a great run and I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Oberst. I, I too just want to express my gratitude. It's been a pleasure to serve mm -hmm. alongside you uh, as you. chair of this committee and as a committee member. And I know you to care greatly about this district. You have held us in, um, yeah, just, just wonderful fiscal health through the years, through challenging years. Yeah. <laughs> and I appreciate, um, yeah, just your, your guidance, uh, your leadership, and ultimately, you know, it is our, our finances and our budget that is, is the, the moral and ethical guidance of our district sure. too. And you have taken great care of our students, so thank you. Thank you. All right, any other comments? From the committee. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's been really my pleasure to work with you um, on more than just this board, yeah. but but I, I do see um, that you have very strong um, ethical perspectives when it comes to finances, and especially in an urban district, knowing you know the people that um, that the money serves, so to speak. I have seen you really try and balance you know the, the human talent of providing for our teachers and all those things and at the same time the vast um, assets that this district has and I really I really appreciate that and, and I think Thank it you. has I mean obviously we're seeing some of the fruit of the many uh, new programming um, the machinery that we have um, the things that our kids have access to now uh, has been, you know, through some wise counsel in, in that regard and, and really appreciate that. Seeing a lot of um, this district going for a lot of different monies. And I mean, we have, we have won some incredible uh, opportunities yes, for our have. district. Yes, we have. And it's, and it's been not just the programming, but I think the wise stewardship when they looked at the, the resources and how we're handling that. So I really appreciate that. It has brought a lot of new resources and opportunities to, to our families, you know, in, in the hood. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. I, I will mention, I had talked to the superintendent actually a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of months ago now and told her if, we hadn't completed bargaining, which we haven't, that I would, would stay on to complete that. And, and, and so I'll, I'll be around for, I, I'm hopeful of like the three or four contracts, and we're close on many of them, uh, will be done by, 
with the next 30 days, but um, so I will be around a little bit at least. <laughs> Very good. We so, appreciate that yeah. care. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, well then I will officially adjourn this your last finance committee meeting. Thank you, Mr. Albert and everybody. Mm -hmm.